Hey, this is Raven with Talon Survival. Today we're going to do a quick Q&A session and go over the button layout for the Bofeng UV5R. We'll also talk a little bit about squelch settings, repeater functions, tones, memory VFO, and transmit dual receive. Stay tuned and we'll get started. We got the Bofeng UV5R and we're going to go through the button layouts. So start, actually we should probably start with it off. So we'll start with it off. So your volume and your power on off is mm -hmm. the same button up here. It's a rotary knob. So you turn that, it's going to crank it on. Left is going to be quieter, right is going to be louder. Mm -hmm. That's going to be your only knob at the top. Antenna here, um, your, on the side you've got your orange button says the call button and that's a programmable button right now in this code plug we've got it set for fm radio so you can listen to fm radio that's how mine set up now. so uh you press it once when it's when it's set to this setting when you press it once it's going to take you to fm and you press it again, it's going to take you back okay. to your channels. Now, if you're listening to FM radio and someone talks on the channels that you're monitoring, it will click back over automatically from FM radio to hear your traffic it's, it's on the channel. There, right? It doesn't stay there. It'll okay. stay there for a couple of seconds. It's a good question. It'll stay there for a couple of seconds, and then it'll go no, back, back to, to FM, FM radio. Okay. Now, if you talk then it will stay there okay but once you're done with that conversation after a cup that after that time delay either during your conversation or after your conversation it'll switch back to fm okay all right so that covers this one mm -hmm. so your next one below is the most important that's your ptt push to talk right okay and so push to hold push and hold it while you're talking let go when you're done just like pretty much any standard walkie talkie right. the one below it is the monitor button and so if you push this in, it's going to give you your light. Push it in again, it's going to give you your light flash. And then push it again, it'll turn it off. Okay. You push and hold it, it gives you, it basically turns off your squelch. Okay, and that's without any lights or anything. You just got to hold it in. Correct. Just okay. press and hold it in. And it'll stay in that mode until you release the button. Correct. Okay. So it's a momentary. So you push and hold it. It'll stay, and when you let go, it'll stop. Okay, so that would be if, obviously, the thing is squelching, meaning it's kind of got a threshold, and it's you're not going to have that static all the time, but if you had, a, a like, a weak signal or something, and you wanted to get it below the squelch, then that's what that button does? Exactly. Okay. So, like, if you remember on the old FRS radios or something, if you're out skiing, and you hear someone at, that talking, like, Right, right. You can hold, so you can hold push and down. hold that, and a lot of the, the FRS ones have a monitor too, but you can push and hold that button as your monitor and it opens up the squelch so you can hear that okay. audio. Is there any way for that to be on permanently without having to hold the button down? What do you that mean? mode, you know, to, to get rid of the squelch just to do like a monitor, like have the monitor on continuously? I don't believe so. Let me look at the settings real quick. I do not see it. Okay, that's fine. So no. Um, what you can do, and actually we'll hop into, the, we're not going to go through all the menu items, but I'll show you this one. So if you uh, go to menu, this can take you through your menu items, and actually we're already there. One of the most important ones is menu item zero, which is squelch. You can see zero up here okay, in the corner so maybe. that's where you can adjust it. So, so here I can go menu, no, watch this arrow on the left here. Mm -hmm. So if I click menu, let me get back all the way out. So we'll go back into it. If I go to menu, see how there's an arrow up at the top? Right, by, by the SQL. Yep, so that means I'm toggling through my menu items. Okay. But if I hit menu again on that item, that allows me to edit the number. The, the, the mode that it's in. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go in that and so I'm going to go down to 0. We'll see what happens. So we're at 0. So if I leave menu, there, we just did it permanently. Right. Okay, so there is a way to do it. So, uh, if you ever want to do that, which probably wouldn't. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to do that. What you may want to do, what's probably more uh, more prevalent, 
is you would go back into your menu, change your settings, and leave it at maybe one or two, uh -huh. or lower it. So one would be your lowest without static. Uh -huh. So this would change, this would basically change that, that sensitivity. Okay. So if you want more distant stations, uh, more static, then you would go, let me, let me stop that so we can hear better. Yeah, put it up to four or back where it was. Yeah, so we would leave it, uh, so we could bring it down to hear more distant stations or higher to just hear things more more local. Okay. So we'll put it back so at four. So what's the typical setting? About four is about right? Uh, you see what works for your area. Mm -hmm. It kind of depends on what's called the noise floor. So just see what works. If you're if you're on four and you start hearing it break, squelch a whole lot, mm. then you may want to turn it up. Okay. But then if you're out in rural areas where there's not a bunch of folks around or you're not hearing any static, you can even turn you can turn it down and then you'll hear more okay. traffic further away. Okay, so that covers the monitor, but covers the ones on the sides. So let's do the ones on the front. So VFO um, MR. This toggle, short, simple answer is here, you can drive. Short, simple answer is that, yeah, can we make it focus, maybe? Yeah, it's that one anyway. There we go. So you can make it, um, here we go. So you can make it, uh, that, that's how you toggle between your memory and your, your, it's called your VFO mode. Your VFO stands up, I believe it's variable frequency oscillator. But basically what that means is that's where you can tune with the keypad. Okay. So if, like I'm in memory now. So if I hit VFO MR, now I see my frequencies. Now you can tune it like a tuning dial. Exactly. With the arrows, not with, the, not with this dial, but with the arrows and the buttons down here. So say, for example, I want to go listen to the weather. I can pick down one, our local one, 162400. And so we're inside, so you may have issues, but let's see. Over here, I know you can hear it. Let me see. Oh, yeah. So, um, you can. So, if you're testing a frequency, mm -hmm. or you know the or, frequency, or, or and it's not in your memory. Somebody gives you a frequency that's not programmed, and you say, "I'm not programmed for that," but I know I can go manually. That's the one button there. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, so that's that's this is so your memory. You have your memory channel on your right. You hit it again. It takes you to your VFO, which is your your tuning. You okay. can come in here and tune. Right. You can also, and this is getting a little advanced, but you can also come in here and allow access to repeaters as well. So, say someone says, "Hey, here's uh, here's this repeater frequency. It's on one four six six four zero, and the tone's one zero three five." Well, I can go in here and program that with the keypad. So I could go one four six six four zero, and notice I'm programming the top, the bottom. If I want to do the top, I go A B. A B is your toggle. Mm -hmm. So one four six six four zero. So and then I can go through my menu items here and set my tone. That's what these menu items are. So uh, so for the repeater. I would do a transmit tone. So say if it was like we said 1035, I would do menu and I would change it 1035. But then I also have to set, and actually it's already set here for me. See the negative? So that tells me there's a negative offset. So when I transmit, it's doing what it's supposed to. It's doing the negative offset, which is standard for that mm -hmm. repeater um, frequency. And then it's doing the tone. It's over here in the corner. So when I transmit, if you look close right here, can you see it? Yeah. If I transmit, see how it shows CT? Mm -hmm. CT stands for, is short for CTCSS. So if my tone is on when I'm transmitting, I'm going to see CT, CT when I transmit. If my tone is off and I, uh, if, my to if I'm not transmitting, I'm not going to have that. If my tone's set for receive as well, then I would see CT over here on my receive okay. side. So, and what, was, what does the tone accomplish? So tones are used um, to alleviate hearing unwanted signals. Okay. So for example, if I'm running a repeat, if I'm, if I'm talking on repeaters on ham radio, the repeater is going to listen to a tone to accept my transmission. If my radio doesn't transmit the tone, it's not going to let me in. Okay. And so it does that so that if there's interference, it doesn't inadvertently trigger the repeater. Hmm. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, from a 
simplex standpoint, radio to radio, you set a tone on the transmit and the receive. And you do that so that on the receive side, uh, if I'm going radio to radio, it's coming to your radio. I have to transmit one for this one to other radio to hear it. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, he has to transmit one for me to hear to break okay. my receive tone. Okay. So, like, if you if you recall uh, FRS radios, how they have the privacy tones? Right. That's a CTCSS tone. Yeah, because they're typically, what, 14 channels or something like that? or And then, exactly. And then, but they seem like they're 80 channels or something because they, within each one of those channels, there's a five or six or 12 tones or whatever. Yeah, so they do the, what they call a privacy t privacy tones. Yeah. So you can yeah, you can make yeah, a... Yeah, I think they use the word code. Exactly, privacy <laughs> codes. Yeah, and it's got a little button on there and you kind of toggle through them. Exactly. So that's, that's what the tones do. So basically when you mess with a privacy code on an FRS radio, mm -hmm. that's the same as on here if I were to go to menu and program both a transmit and a receive tone. Okay. So, so some of here. those um, here. family radios, that tone is both for transmit and receive. Exactly. I think that's but it, like some people you go with channel three and then they use code fourteen and so three yeah. three one four is pi. That's an easy one to remember. Uh, yeah, sure. So they they uh, so on there they simplify it and they just give you a you know you use this privacy code, where in you know in the more technical radio world or the ham world you've got. Uh, I lost it. There we go. It's it's actually a transmit and a receive CTCSS okay. tone. So you, right. you'd set it here, okay. and you'd set it here. Okay. But I'm getting off to the weeds yeah, in a little bit. Yeah, let's go for the rest of the, the so, the front here. So that gives you your VFO. That gives you your AB. We'll go ahead and go back to memory. Uh, your color here. Both you can change your color on your screen in the programming. Won't really get into that. You this uh, uh, color or your here reds transmit. Um, if you're receiving, green is receive. Okay. Uh, if you, you uh, probably recall that from when we opened up the squelch. Actually, we can do it real quick. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so green's receive. Uh, okay. So A B toggle. Uh, band. Band is going to be if we're in here. I can change if I'm in my VFO mode. I can change between my UHF and my VHF band. Okay. So not a really it's okay to have but not a huge need for it because I can just go direct dial it down if here. If I accidentally get in there somehow, how do I know to get back? Where? From band? From yeah, v yeah, like it, yeah, like like let's say I got it in the wrong band. So there's two ways to do it. One is you hit band and it takes you back to... Okay. So say you went to from, from V to U mm -hmm. and you want to get back, you can hit band. Or you can just, if you remember your frequency, you can just type it in. Okay. I believe we're at one four six six four zero, and you can just type it in. Okay. So either one, you can use a dial or you can use band. Okay, and band's only gonna be affected if you're in this V. Correct. VFO. Okay. Correct. It's only gonna if mess. You're on the memory ones. You're only gonna be dealing with the memory channels anyway. Exactly. It's locked for that specific memory okay. channel. So menu, menu. We already talked about. You hit menu. It takes you through. Mm -hmm. Your arrow on the left tells you if you're in your menu scroll or if you're in your change your settings area okay uh, and then exit will get you out of menu okay up and down is going to allow you to change your frequency if okay. you're in vfo you're going to change it with your frequency step so this one's set for 2.5 right now if i'm in and so you can see that can get a little tedious if you're going a long way so your direct dial is handy mm -hmm. uh, or you can do um uh what were we saying oh if I am in memory mode, it's going to change between my memory, my memory Channel channels. One, two, three, four, and exactly. So on. Okay. Uh, so A, B in your memory. Um, so let's talk A, B in memory for a minute. Okay. So there's two things on this radio that are important to know. When you're in memory mode, A, B is going to shift you between these. Okay. But the radio by default, and there's no way to change this, is always going to leave the arrow, which is the primary just think of it as the primary uh, memory that you're listening to, top mm -hmm. or bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's The arrow moves. So if I were to hear on Mer traffic on MERS 1 right now, that arrow is going to go from MERS 5 to MERS 1. If you're receiving something. Exactly. And so it's always going to do that. And there's no way to turn that off. Okay. So what that is, is that's called, um, and that'll happen if you're if you're using transmit dual receive. And that's a feature within this radio. So in this one right now, we've got it turned off. 
and for all novices, I recommend leave it off because what'll that's really the point. I think and this would be a good one for Terry, Terry too, because she's thinking about buying these radios and she's going to operate it like I do, as mostly as a you know a, a, a an amateur. You know, we're just going to use these things. I mean, it's a nice radio, but we're going to use it like you know like one that you buy at Cabela's or something sure. like that. So. So um, I recommend folks leave it off because what that means is you're only going to hear what you're only going to receive the one where this arrow is. Okay. So that means the arrow is not going to move on. So you. don't don't get hung up in the fact that you got two lines there because the one you're only going to deal with. Is it, the exactly. Now, could I inadvertently hit the A B and take me to the wrong channel? Yes, but it's a lot less likely than getting some unwanted traffic on MERS one this moves over, I'm not looking at my screen and I go to talk and now I'm talking on the wrong channel. Right. So my full recommendation is to, one, make sure TD, TDR is off, transmit dual receive is off, you can do that in menu, and this code plug gets defaulted to off, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, for the second thing is, you have two channels here, we know we're only listening to one, but to alleviate that risk of hitting the button by accident, yeah. If you know what channel you're going to be using, set both of them to the same. So if we're going to use MERS 5, I'm going to punch in 14. And then I'm going to go below here and punch in four, excuse me, 014. And so now, it doesn't matter what channel I'm on. Okay. Even if you hit it, if it's in your backpack and it, and it gets, you know, and it's on and it gets hit or it's in your pocket or you grab it and you accidentally hit that, you know, it's not going to matter. Exactly. Okay. So I could be on either channel, and on some radios there's a way to change it from where I just want to listen to one channel. Turn the other one off. Okay. With this one, other than dual receive, you're always going to see two channels on the display. There's no way around it. Okay. So this is, the, this is the safest bet. Yeah. So set both the top and the bottom, both to the same channel, and then in the, from the novice use case, you don't have to worry about someone hitting a button. And if you, if you are wanting to worry about hitting the button, then you can always lock it too, right? Yep. Actually, it's going to lead us to our next thing. So... Uh, the, the numbers are self-explanatory. Uh, if you look here real close, some people can see it, some can't because it's small text. You see blue writing right. on the buttons. Yeah, each one has blue writing. So this is just your shortcut to the menu items. So step would be uh, your frequency step, TXP, transmit power, TDR, is, as you see right here. So what that means, if I'm going into menu and I hit step, it's going to take me straight to step. So if you can read that and you can use it, um, that's handy. Sometimes it's almost for me. I don't. I don't use it much. I just go straight into menu and toggle through. With sunglasses or goggles on, so, <laughs> a, yeah. a lot of folks can't. You know, it's even hard for me to read. I have to be digging in for my glasses. So toggle. You know, you can go into menu and just scroll through. That's the easiest way. So last thing, key lock. One of the most important things. Uh, down here on the zero, you're going to see a little blue lock key. Right, yep. So press and hold that down. And when you hold that down, you're going to see a little key lock come up here in the yeah. top right of the screen. That's one thing I do remember. And that means none of my buttons are going to work. Right, the tone is different when you hit it, so exactly. it's not a clue that you were locked out. So I say none of your buttons are going to work. Your side buttons will still work. Okay. So, there's, so there is a risk of potentially hitting your FM radio or whatever this setting is. Yeah. And your, your monitor still works. Okay. And your light still works, and your PTT still works, but all of your front display stuff, your your front front screen stuff, mm -hmm. doesn't work. It's locked out. If you out. do hit that monitor um, button by mistake and didn't know it, and that light comes on, is there a timeout on that thing, or does it just stay on? There's not. It'll just stay on. But I've had that happen to me before. It's an LED. It's just it's a low power LED. So it it's you just you'll look it's in your bag much, and go, oh crap, there's a light on. Not, not much of the battery. Drain. Yeah, there's there's not much battery drain. It's more of a um uh it, it's so I, I I haven't seen it impact me much at all. Okay. Um, with regard, even on the smaller batteries, I haven't seen it be too much okay. of an issue. I'm sure you know it is batteries, so I'm sure there is somewhat of a drain but nothing substantially impacting you like what a transmission okay. would be yeah, it's not going to get hot or anything like exactly that. Okay. i want to give a big thanks to our friend daryl for helping us through this q a session hopefully this information was useful for you if you like this video give us a big thumbs up go ahead and subscribe to our channel and click that alarm bell if you'd like to be notified of future videos if you're interested in more information on getting your ham radio license we will have an online ham radio test prep course coming out soon you can check that out and the uh, link below. Thanks for watching.